You know, sometimes these fantasy analysts, they don't want to tell you their favorite real sleepers. Sure, they'll list off the same sleepers of everybody else, but they're not giving you the names of the guys they're taking late flyers on, those real dark horses that could pay off big. Well, I'm going to tell you all of mine. If you can't wait for draft season, guess what? You don't have to. Join Underdog Fantasy and you can draft right now for MLB Best Ball for the 2024 season. They've got some new contests that just opened up. Check them out right now. If you sign up and use promo code ENDGAME, you get a 100% deposit match for your first $100 that you put into your account. Try Underdog Fantasy today. I already gave you my favorite hitters to take with your final pick in fantasy drafts. Now here are seven pitchers that I'm taking chances on. Let's start north of the border with a pitcher that looks all but guaranteed to take the fifth spot in the Blue Jays rotation. Step aside, Alec Manoa. It's Bowden Francis time. Even if you were somehow betting on a bounce back season for Manoa, he's injured and he won't be in the rotation to start the season. Francis showed that he belongs. I don't want to be that guy that says, well, look at his spring training stats. Okay, sure. He hadn't given him a run until just recently. His numbers, 193 ERA, 093 whip. It's in 14 innings of spring training. But look at his time in Toronto last season. As a reliever in usually the middle innings, a 173 ERA and a 0.83 whip. And that was in 20 appearances. Not a huge sample still, but that's what makes him a deep sleeper. Nobody's really on him because once he got to the triple A level, the minors, he kind of struggled, was hit hard, but it looks like he's figured things out and he's got a pretty nice curveball to pair with his fastball. Look, if he's going to get a job and be out there every fifth day, this is somebody who could put up some stats for you. Now you want to talk reliever turned starter with upside. Let's look to the White Sox where that rotation is wide open. They've got a spot reserved for Garrett Crochet. Now, this is really interesting because they said early on they're planning to convert him into a starter, which sounds odd because if you look at his profile, he really figures to be more like a closer and a late inning guy, which he used to be. But hey, they need starters, that's for sure, especially now after trading Dylan Cease away, and they already did. Like, look, he's got the stuff, right? He's definitely somebody who's got an overpowering fastball. The question isn't talent here, and it's definitely not opportunity. The question is, Will he hold up over a full season? A lot of people have questions about Jordan Hicks in San Francisco. Same thing. A guy who has an overpowering fastball, has been a closer, and now they're trying to make a starter. Same thing here with Crochet. Back in 2021, Crochet was an up-and-coming reliever. Over 54 innings, he struck out 65 batters and posted a 2.82 ERA. And then 2022, didn't even pitch at all that made just 13 brief relief appearances last year. So this guy's barely pitched really at the major league level for two years due to injury. Is he ready to be a starter? It looks like yes, because so far he's hitting 97 again on his fastball this spring, hasn't given up a run in his first nine innings. And that also has come with 12 strikeouts and zero walks. I wouldn't count on him to be the next Dylan Cease, but At the very least, we know that he's got a shot and he's got the arm talent. Just hope he just stays in one piece. All right, now this one is a semi-trendy sleeper, at least if you're deep into fantasy baseball analysis. Louis Varland of the Minnesota Twins hasn't put up impressive numbers at the major league level. It looks like he'll finally get a chance to prove himself in the rotation because Anthony Desclafani, who was slated to be the number five guy, is, surprise, surprise, on the injured list. Look, Varland's numbers aren't overwhelming, but again, this is where you kind of have to dig a little deeper. Looks like last year he saw some gains in his velocity for the fastball and his K rate. Well, it's not great, but it made a big jump and it could continue to do that if he can just locate that fastball a little better. There is something to the fact that the Twins seem to be pretty good with their young pitchers and Varland is not in a bad spot, especially playing against that division. All right, now let's get to the Yankees rotation. Garrett Cole is out for a while. They missed out on Dylan Cease and Blake Snell. Their final rotation spot is still up for grabs. I'm not sure that Will Warren will get it, but I think in time he should. Last season in 19 starts for the Scranton Wilkes Bar Rail Riders, he posted a 3.61 ERA and a 1.30 whip. It's okay. I mean, that's nothing too overwhelming, but this is a pitcher who's definitely got the raw stuff to continue to develop, and I think he will. Look, he can pile up Ks. That's not a question. 
just needs to, like most young pitchers, cut down on the walks and also make sure he doesn't give up as many home runs. Warren right now battling with Clayton Beater to see if he can earn a spot. It's hard to see Warren coming out on top early, but again, this is a guy I feel is worth a stash because he could pay off at some point early this season. No longer in the mix is former Yankee Johnny Brito, now in San Diego as part of that mega Juan Soto trade. Now, San Diego's got a lot of candidates for their rotation. Early in the preseason, I was interested in Randy Vasquez, and I'm not completely off him, but I'm starting to like Brito a little bit more the more that I see him. Brito throws a 96 mile per hour fastball. It's also got a pretty effective changeup and a curveball. Like Warren, he can also punch out batters at a pretty high clip, but also had a home run problem last year. 14 long balls getting up over 90 innings. I think being in San Diego will definitely help that. And there's another promising prospect who just needs to get a chance. You might not have heard of him because he's in Pittsburgh. Jared Jones. Jones is another pitcher who looks like he's ready for a shot in the rotation. The question is, will he get that shot? Because the Pirates, being the Pirates, are adding all sorts of former starters and has-beens. They just picked up Domingo Herman on a one-year deal. Eric Lauer is there. Chase Anderson. There are a lot of ways that they could suppress Jones' service time. But Jones is doing everything he can in the spring to show that he should be in the rotation right now. It's just up to the Pirates to give him that chance. And then my last not-so-secret pick is somebody I drafted a lot of two years ago. I'm back on Aaron Ashby because I still have faith. Ashby had last year completely wiped out by injury. He should be ready for, I'm guessing, a mid to late April debut. He seems to be progressing a little faster than anticipated because early in the offseason, it made it sound like he might not be ready till May or June. Either way, I like the fact that this is a very ground ball heavy pitcher. Two years ago in the majors, 95th percentile in ground ball rate. He's a sinker slider guy. Also has an effective changeup, and that helps him to generate strikeouts at a pretty high rate for somebody who is really in the business of inducing soft contact. Gonna have to monitor health and see if when he's ready, but don't forget about Ashby just because last year really didn't amount to anything for him. If you didn't catch the hitter version of my late round picks that I'm secretly drafting everywhere, well, you can check it out right here.